So as we're looking at a polynomial, we want to be able to talk about the different pieces of this thing. So the first thing we need to talk about, for any polynomial that has some subtractions involved, we can find an equivalent, equivalent polynomial using only addition. We can always rewrite subtraction as addition. So if we do that in these first two cases, negative 5x squared, the negative is attached to that constant 5, making the thing just a negative, but we're subtracting in between these two, so I can turn that into addition of negative x. Okay, similar story for down here. If I take x to the fifth, I can add negative 2x to the sixth, add 4x, since it's already positive, and add negative 7. So when we do that, each polynomial is written using only additions. And each of these pieces are monomials. One term, they're monomials. And each of them are called terms. So an easier way to think about it, instead of rewriting it as addition, is just the sign goes with the thing to the right. So my term is negative 5x squared. My term is negative x, like we could see if we did write it with addition. So take those two, identify the terms. We've already taken care of the first. Give me the terms of the second one. So at the beginning, we had negative 5x squared was our first term, and negative x was the second term. In our second example, the first term was x to the fifth, second was negative 2x to the sixth, positive 4x, negative 7. So the sign just goes with the thing on the right. So, individually, we want to be able to classify these things. We know what monomials look like when it's one term, one chunk. And we've seen that case. Monomials are the polynomials with just one term. A few examples that we've seen. 4x squared, mm, 2, x cubed, negative uh, 7x to the 64th. Doesn't matter, but they're all monomials. Polynomials with just two terms, what do you think they're going to be called? Binomials. A few examples. I'll just combine these two. 4x squared plus 2, that's a binomial. x cubed minus 7x to the 64th. That is a binomial. Two terms in each piece. Polynomials with just three terms, what do you think? Trinomials. Again, I'll just build from our last case, so we'll combine three of them together. Trinomials got three monomials inside of it. Those with more than three, they don't have specific names. Hmm, we just call them polynomials. Polynomials with number of terms. So if we have a polynomial with six terms, it's not a making up some name, it's just a polynomial with six terms. So take these four examples, classify each of them using these specific names. So the first one, I have two terms, so what are we looking at? Binomial. First, or excuse me, second one, it only has one. So we're looking at monomials third one, I've got one, two, three, four. We don't have a specific name for anything larger than three, so it's just going to be a polynomial of four terms. That's how we classify those. And the last one, one, two, three, so it is a trinomial. So those are very important to know, those first three, and then anything larger than that is just a polynomial with its number of terms. So the other pieces of a polynomial that we want to break down are going to be the coefficient and degrees. We have two versions of the degree, but we'll get there. So first, coefficient. The, the coefficient of the term 5x squared is 5. So the coefficient just means the constant out on the front, whatever number is attached to that specific monomial term. So in this following polynomial, we want to identify the coefficients. 
So what are the different numbers on the front of each term? On this term, my coefficient is 3. On the second one, my coefficient is negative 2. On the third, my coefficient is 5. And on the last, my coefficient is negative 4. It's just a constant itself. The next piece, the degree. The degree of a term is the power or the exponent of the variable. So if we're looking at negative 5x cubed, or to the third, the degree is 3. So in this same polynomial that we were looking at before, we want to tell about the degree of every single term involved. So the power on x in this case, to the fifth. Power on x in our second term, to the third. Power of x in the third term is 1, so it's to the first power. And I don't have a variable here, but I could write 1. And what do I have to raise it to to make it go away? To the 0th power, because anything raised to the 0 is 1. It'll go away. So even though it's funny to say the 0th power, it's true. That's what's going on here. And because we can write that constant 1 as x to the 0th, the degree of any constant term is going to be 0. Except for 0, because that case is undefined. Okay. So, in the next polynomial, we want to talk about the term, the coefficient, the degree of each individual term, and then the degree of the polynomial. So, what is the degree of the polynomial? It is the largest of all of the terms that we can see. Largest power of all of the terms. So, even if they're not in order, we need to look and see which term has the highest power involved. So let's do that. What are my terms of this polynomial? So my first term, 3x to the fourth. Second term, sine goes with it, negative 8x cubed. Third is x squared. Fourth, 7x. And last, again, sine goes with the constant, negative 6. So in each of these terms, let's talk about their coefficients. Coefficient on the front of the first, 3, negative 8 for the second. What number is on the front of this one? How many factors of x squared do I have sitting here? One of them, 7, and then negative 6. Coefficient just means the constant on the front. And what about the power or the degree of each term? So first term, it's to the fourth. Second to the third. Third is the second power. First, because again, what is unspoken right there. And any constant again is raised to the zeroth power. So generally we see things in descending order, with the highest power getting smaller as we go along. That was how this one was written. So overall, what is the degree of our polynomial? What was our largest power that we saw of all of the terms? fourth was the highest. So overall, it is a fourth degree polynomial. And we couldn't classify it with a specific name, but it has one, two, three, four, five. So it's a fourth degree polynomial, polynomial of five terms. No special name for anything larger than three. Right. So go ahead and take this example with this polynomial. It's not necessarily in descending order. You can see they're kind of mixed. Identify the degree of each term, and then tell me the degree of the polynomial overall. So the first term has fourth degree. Second has second degree. The third term, it is to the fifth power. To the first power, and any constant is always to the zero power. So in this case, our highest power did not come first. So we need to compare between all of them. The degree of this polynomial is to the fifth. So this is a polynomial of degree five. And again, to classify it, one, two, three, four, five terms. So a fifth degree polynomial of five terms is what we're looking at. 
So now what if we start combining these polynomials? How do they behave? So when terms have the same variable and the same exponent, they have to match exactly on their back ends, we say that they are like terms. And we've seen that before. Can't combine apples and oranges. So they have to have the same variable, same exponent, exactly the same buts. We can often simplify polynomials by combining or collecting like terms. So you'll see those two words used synonymously. Just get comfortable with both. Combining or collecting like terms just means we're gathering the things together that are alike. So in these four examples, we want to collect like terms. So we should first look and see what matches exactly the same on the back end. So I've got x cubed and x cubed. These two are like terms, but they're not alike with the last two because the power back here of my variable is zero. So the only things that we can combine are the first two. If I've got four factors of x cubed and I'm taking away one, we're left with three factors of x cubed plus two. And we should always check. Can we combine those? Are they alike? No. So we're done there. Second one. So let's see. What is x squared? Does he have anything in common? So I've got an x squared there and an x squared here. So together, how many of those do we have? I've got 5x squared, and I'm going to add 2x squared to that. We can go in order and look at the constants. I have plus 7, minus 11. Those two can be combined together because they match exactly. And the last thing, positive 4x to the 4th and negative 2x to the 4th. So I've got 4x to the 4th and negative 2x to the 4th. And now if you can do this part in your head without writing that in-between step, go for it. So how many factors of x squared altogether do I have? Five, and I'm adding two. So I've got seven of those. And the constant that I'm adding on to the back of that. I have seven, and I'm taking away 11. So I'm going to have a negative four, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that positive. Turn it into a negative. And how many factors of x to the fourth do we have? Positive four, and I'm taking away two. So I've got 2x to the fourth left over. All right. If you came up with a different order than this, is it still going to be the same? Let's say I combined my x to the fourth first, then I did the squares, then I did the constant. Are these two equivalent? This whole chunk and this whole chunk. Yeah, because of what law? What law allows me to change the order between addition and subtraction? The commutative law. We can commute things around totally fine. All right, next example. Start looking, comparing to the fifth power. I've got a positive 3 and I have a negative 3. X to the fifth. So those are going to be gone. And what are we left with? 2x squared, can he be combined with anybody? All that's left is that constant, positive 8. So, we're done there. Sometimes it works out nice. Sometimes it doesn't, and we have to deal with fractions. But that's okay. So, I like to group them together. My x to the fourth. I've got one here and one there. So, I know that two-thirds x to the fourth and negative one-sixth can be combined together. Then, what do we have left? x to the third, x to the third, x to the third. All three of those can be combined. So I can add to that negative x to the third plus two-fifths x cubed minus three-tenths x cubed. So within each of those parentheses, we can combine these like terms and these like terms, but we can't combine these two chunks together because they're not alike. So we need to work on the insides of both of these, simplify them down. So in order to combine these two, what do we need? Common denominators to be able to add any fractions together. So the least common between 3 and 6 is 6. So what are we missing over here? I need to multiply by a factor of 2 over 2. 
So this is equivalent to saying 4 6, and I'm taking away one of them. Now that we have those common denominators, we can combine them, get one term. So, we worked on it on the left. Let's work on it on this right chunk. Combining these three. Least common denominator between 1, 5, and 10. 10 is going to be it since they're all multiples. And what do we need? What am I missing on negative x cubed? It's a 1 down below, so I need to multiply it by 10 over 10. And we can double check, if I do the division, do I get back to my original? Yes. And down here, how do I take 5 and turn it into 10? Multiply by 2 over 2. So what is its equivalent? 4 tenths, x cubed. And the last term already has it in terms of tenths. So we don't have to change that one. So what are we looking at? How many factors of x to the 4th? Had 4 and it was taken away 1. So I've got... 3, 6, x to the 4th. And what am I adding on to that? How many factors are we going to have from here? How many tenths x cubed? How many are we looking at? So negative 10, adding 4 will give me negative 6. Negative 6 minus 3 will give me minus 9. Okay. So we don't like these parentheses now on there. Since we've simplified on the inside, we can write it concisely and not have to write the parentheses, because what's on the outside here? 1. So this is equivalent to 3 6 x to the 4th minus 9 tenths x to the 3rd. Last check should be, can we simplify anything? Yeah, that first term. 3 goes into 6 two times. So we're looking at 1 half x to the 4th minus 9 tenths x cubed. So be careful when you're dealing with fractions, write out every single step. We need to combine with common denominators only the things that are alike. We can't combine these two in the end. All right, so go ahead and take the next three. Combine those like terms, see what you get. So in the first, what were you looking at? We can combine t to the fourth and t to the fourth. If I have four and I'm taking away seven of them, how many am I looking at? Starting over. Wrong page. So for the first one, what happened? I can combine my t to the fourth and t to the fourth. If I have four and I'm taking away seven of them, I'm left with negative three t to the fourth. And t cubed. We can combine those two together. Got negative 9 and I'm adding 10, so I'm left with one factor of t cubed. We can't combine these two because they're not alike, so we're done there. For part b, again, constant. He doesn't have anybody to combine with, so we'll just write him below. And I'm left with t cubed, t cubed, t cubed. So if I have negative 4 minus 24, look at it, a negative 28. And I'm adding 1, so negative 27x cubed, all together in the end. And part C, x cubed doesn't have any buddies. And what happens with our x to the fifth? I've got negative 8 of them and positive 8 of them, so they're going to cancel and be gone. All right, so it's kind of jumbled in these examples when our polynomials don't follow a specific order. Sometimes we have higher powers first, sometimes we don't. So we kind of want to get into uh, a standard form. Polynomial, polynomial is usually written in descending order. So the term with the largest degree comes first. Then the term with the next largest, next largest, next largest, and so on, in order from left to right. So even if we have a polynomial in a wonky order like this one, we can rewrite it, commute the terms around, and write in descending order. So the largest power that we can see in the first example is to the seventh, so that one will come first. Next largest, I'm going to cross off the ones I've taken care of. Next largest is to the fifth, 6x to the fifth. 
And again, next largest is the third. And squared is the smallest that we have. So still the exact same polynomial. We just commuted things around, that's fine. But now we have it in that descending order. So we have a polynomial of degree 7 is the highest. When it's in descending order, it's nice to see that really quick. Same thing for part B. What is our highest power? To the fifth. Took care of that one. Next highest is to the third. Next highest is squared to the first and to the zeroth constant on the end. So polynomial of degree five. When it's in that order, easy to see. The last little piece. In a few of these, we've had some holes. We have missing variables involved. So, what is missing? We're in descending order. What term or what power on x are we missing in this case? So I jumped from 5 to 3. So we're missing an x to the fourth term. So sometimes it's helpful to write in a missing term with a zero coefficient or just leaving in a space in there. If I add 0 to anything, am I changing it? No. I can add 0, not change anything. So how could we rewrite this polynomial, filling in that hole for the x to the fourth term? This is going to be helpful when we're doing long division of polynomials. We need to have a space for every single power on our variable. So this is going to be equivalent to 8x to the fifth. Plugging that hole now, I can add 0x to the fourth. Because 0 times anything, 0. It's gone. It's not there. But we need that little placeholder. Then the rest, we haven't missed any powers. Don't have any holes to fill. So those two are still equivalent. Same exact thing, but now we have a placeholder uh, eventually when we start to do long division.